Well, good evening, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 30th, 2019, recorded around 11.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is the second update today. Uh, Hurricane Dorian has significantly intensified with winds up to 140 miles per hour now, making it a category, a high end category for a hurricane uh, here. And you can see uh, Dorian is uh, still located here. And uh, over the next few days, Dorian is expected to make a turn off towards the west and eventually make the turn towards the north and west. When that occurs, though, is still the big uncertainty at this point in time. Uh, this is the official forecast for um, Hurricane Dorian at the 11 o'clock advisory. Uh, we have continued to see a westward shift in the center position over the day. However, uh, things are still rather uncertain with Hurricane Dorian as uh, when Dorian uh, gets to be over here, it could still stall out but move further inland or just graze the shore and head on out that way. There is still a lot of uncertainty here and uh, over the last uh, little bit the European and the GFS has come into a better agreement now uh, that this will likely graze the coast and then head off somewhere out in the general vicinity of South Carolina. However, things are still very uncertain at this point in time. And the large uncertainty remains here with how big this cone is. Uh, there is still a cone of uncertainty even into the Gulf of Mexico. There is still the possibility um, that this either speeds up or finds just enough to turn over inland into the peninsula. And uh, that is what the Horf model is suggesting that this will come up at a higher latitude but make a landfall near Jacksonville and continue off towards the north and west. Um, and we've seen that uh, throughout the day. The, Euro uh, the, um, the UK MET models, the ensemble guidance is mainly clustered within this area as well. Uh, taking that into the Florida Peninsula, and so is the GEFS ensembles uh, that are mainly focusing this into the Florida Pan or the Florida Peninsula, excuse me. So there's a lot of uncertainty in where Dorian will be within the next four to five days. But the main takeaway is that for the Bahamian Islands um, up here. Uh, there is going to be a major Category 4 hurricane, possibly even a Category 5 hurricane, uh, that could barrel down and just stall over this area, dumping a tremendous amount of heavy rain uh, surge and uh, flooding over the Bahamian Islands, which will obviously be very detrimental and significant um, to the Bahamian Islands. Uh, or another possible scenario is that this could actually stall a little uh, far near the coast or even inland. And we have not had hurricane watches posted for Florida, portions of Florida yet. However, I do believe that with time and probably by tomorrow, we will start to see watches go up along the Florida East Coast. Again, this landfall, if any, is going to be very hard to pin down. Uh, there's a large amount of steering factors that are going to uh, compete with Dorian over the next few days. And uh, we will touch here on that in just a little bit. Uh, looking at the rainfall total, the QPF from the Weather Prediction Center, you can see still on track with what we were thinking earlier with the highest amount of rainfall being over the uh, southeastern portion of Florida and the Bahamian Islands. Um, with anywhere between uh, six to eight inches across portions of the Florida Peninsula, and maybe even uh, six to eight, possibly even ten inches across uh, Georgia and south portions of Georgia and South Carolina, uh, depending on the exact track of uh, Hurricane Dorian. If Dorian becomes a little further inland, we can start to see these being shifted a little further to the inland areas. Or if it goes more out in this region, we could expect to see more increase across this area over here over the next few days. So we'll really have to keep an eye on that and see how things play out. Well, looking at Hurricane Dorian on the IR presentation loop, you can see a uh, very well organized uh, central dense overcast. However, uh, it is still a little bit more stretched out on the east side, uh, imparting 
there could be some light suddenly shear still being imparted on the storm and uh, that could still be kind of nosing the um, the off balance here it's a little asymmetric and could be putting a little bit more of the weight on the eastern side of this hurricane here uh, still it's a very dangerous category for hurricane uh, and you can see a little bit of wobbling going on there was an, a wobble almost to the south and then kind of back here and you can see it uh, in the IR presentation on the uh, mesoscale floater you can see a little bit of a south uh, southwesterly dip and then it tries to go back towards the northwest so there's going to be some wobbles there's likely an eye wall replacement cycle going on currently uh, this would expand the wind field and maybe temporarily weaken Dorian uh, only by a little bit um, but what this is going to do is expand the wind field a little bit more and make the storm a little bit bigger so um, by tomorrow we really should start to get answers on exactly where this is going to start being here uh, within the next few days again just because the models right now are indicating uh, a more easterly shift that does not necessarily mean that it's going to continue to be that way um, we can so easily see models bring it right back into the peninsula um, everything is on the table right now and I want to make that very clear that everything currently is on the table and uh, if you look at the uh, zero z guidance here you can see uh, there is still the uk met model and the Horf model that still try to bring dorian in to make landfall uh, near uh, bavard county um, and actually bavard county has issued a mandatory evacuation on low-lying areas in the barrier islands in bavard county so i just want to point that out there that um, Florida will still see uh, significant impacts from Dorian. A lot of these tracks are not necessarily representative of the whole entire thing as there could still likely be uh, guidance that starts to shift further back to the west tomorrow um, or it could continue uh, being more on this uh, easterly trajectory. A lot of it is going to have to deal with how um, how strong this ridging of high pressure is and also the ridging of high pressure over here in the Gulf of Mexico that also wants to steer Dorian uh, that way and also competing factors with a shortwave trough uh, pulling into the northern portions of the United States. A lot is on the table uh, for Hurricane Dorian. Again, regardless, major Hurricane Dorian, almost a Category 5 and is expected to be very significant here and there is some strengthening forecast it's about 150 miles an hour so that's going to be very important uh, this could become near category 5 intensity here within the next few days and um, that is going to be very interesting to watch even when it is uh, approaching florida and also in the northern portions here uh, Dorian is still expected to be about 105 miles per hour here, so just shy of major hurricane intensity. Again, this is going to be very significant as it comes up here, and everything is still on the table from moving into the peninsula uh, to moving and scraping the coast or uh, potentially moving completely out to sea. However, the out to sea track, I'm believing. Uh, is probably not going to happen. Someone is going to see impacts from Dorian along the southeastern United States coast. So everyone from Florida to South Carolina needs to have their plan in place and ready to go. Uh, people in southeastern Florida and in the Florida, Florida Peninsula and the Florida East Coast need to have their preparations done, uh, especially um, people in the southeastern Florida Peninsula and, and southeastern Florida Coast need to have their preparations done um, by about as early as tomorrow afternoon and evening uh, at the very latest Sunday morning as conditions could deteriorate pretty rapidly after that time. So again, we're going to be watching Major Hurricane Dorian uh, over the next uh, coming days and we could be watching this thing for a while again. The main point tonight is that the models have shifted a little further to the east, but do not get caught up on exactly where the center is. Tropical storm force winds extend out about 115 miles.
from the center with hurricane force winds extending out 30 miles from the center and this would not be any more than 30 miles offshore at this point in time so hurricane conditions are still likely for portions of florida but exactly where uh, dorian is and when it starts to take that northern turn we are still watching those keys to the game we should have a better understanding of the dorian's progression throughout the week uh, for when it makes landfall if any by roughly tomorrow or during the day on sunday that's me for me tonight please stay safe everyone and i will be back tomorrow morning with another discussion and update good night